So, the number one question I get is what do we do with the sunflowers after they're done? You can see now, they're all done with. The answer is it's a cover crop. So, I've created a lot of biomass, so I want to try to grind it up and get it back down in the soil. It'll be a great cover for winter. Also, I'm stirring up all kinds of bugs right now. Let me turn it around here. birds all over the place flying around eating what is coming off this field. Now there's a lot of good stuff coming off here. I'm seeing lace wings and other beneficials but I'm also seeing a lot of uh, shield beetles and other things coming off so all in all not a bad thing. Apparently I'm feeding the birds because they're just loving it. They're all over the place above me. But I'm going to keep cutting on this, cutting it high right now to get it knocked over. Then I'll come back in in about a week or so and everything tries to pick back up, cut it low. And then after that, this is it, get it covered for the winter. So, I apologize to everybody for the uh, sound quality. Lost my little mic to plug into my camera here. I got a lot of wind, so I know it's whipping around. But that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I mean, those, I think they're seagulls. I'm not 100% certain, but I know they fly over water all the time. We do not have a large body of water anywhere near us. We've got the Kansas River. It's only about a you know, probably half mile down there. But you really don't see them on there. The only thing I can figure is they're starting to move for migration because we got uh, fall and winter coming up. But literally, hundreds of them flying around everywhere, right up there, and then swarming around the field. I mean, I've never once, I've, I've seen them once out there by uh, Perry Lake, which is close to us, which is a big reservoir. And when the farmer is coming in there, I don't know if he's using bottom plows and flipping the land or if he was tilling just with discs out there but they were in probably hundreds if not thousands and they followed in behind him and cleared the field as he went like the where the grain was being turned up but since I'm out here I guess I want to kind of show you the results of what mowing this all down did so I've got pretty good broken up biomass here it chopped some of the heads up there is grass in here, which I'm not too happy with, as hard as I work to get it out of here. Um, chopped the peas up pretty good. Supposedly there's a bunch of clover in here, which after this all comes down will actually come up because it's sitting more dormant down towards the bottom here. And the cow peas, I mean, like that one wasn't even broken off yet. So we'll have to see. I think what I'm really going to have to do more than anything is since everything's kind of turn around here it's kind of been laid over lengthwise the way I was driving because so I'm gonna have to get some cutters on the back of my toolbar and drive across and that way all of this long stuff right here that's actually laying downwards will get cut and actually 
help it break down quicker. Because the one thing I do need to do this year, actually in a couple weeks, is this whole field block right here. I have four beds of onions planned. I think I'm going to get maybe two of them. Maybe a third one. I'm not 100% certain. I'll have to see how well they, uh, the trays came along. But I've got to work this somehow. Whether it be discs or tilled or plowed in discs or whatever. Because I have to get plastic beds running all the way down here for my winter onions. Without that, I don't really have anywhere to plant them because I have to have that kind of basically infrastructure to plant them in. So, it'll be exciting. I might have to get uh, another tractor out here, pull my bottom plow just to get this turned over and get all this biomass actually worked in. I mean, that's the one thing where this land has been under conventional farming for so long. I've got to do things that I regularly wouldn't do. And this constant plowing and tilling out here in this main area is what I'm having to do just to kind of keep up at this point. I mean, regularly after I get everything going, I really shouldn't have to worry about it because everything should be running smooth, only be driven on certain parts, no major hard pan I got to deal with, nothing I really got to work with. But for now, I'm going to have to not really conventionally farm it, but keep farming almost conventionally. I can't really turn it over into like my permanent beds up here. These are getting more permanent as I go. I'm getting a little better idea of what I'm going to do with this area. But I also, I mean, I've got to get more minerals in here. I've got to get the nitrogen up. Basically, i got to get everything up because it's just so depleted out here. All these beds up here, I turn so much with the quick turning method where I'm only just stirring up the top, but I'm constantly adding to it. I'm adding, adding, adding. So these have really built up the soil up here. I'd like to have a lot more compost, a lot more organic matter in here. But that's just working out for the future. But out here is the biggest issue so far. So, is what it is. I got them down. At least got a clean field now. It's a lot better. We got a farm tour coming up here. Uh, actually, next weekend, we got Cal Valley Farm Tour coming here. So that'll be exciting. Get to show off the farm, have people come out and see the place. We got a decent amount of stuff to see. I mean, we've got some fall carrots right in there. Supposedly spinach in here, but it's like 90 degrees today for some odd reason again. More spinach planted here, which hopefully is popping up. Um, arugula, we got spring mix up top, which is looking beautiful. We got my all-star, and I believe that spring mix up there again. And then I've got, uh, should be some karabis popping. More, um, let's see, those are my winter radishes, which does look like those came out really nice. Got a nice space on them. I'll show everything here in a little bit. Uh, Hawker eyes, hopefully, and uh, more all-star, and I'm getting wet. <laughs> Down here we're doing the less mix. We had a uh, prop house incident. We lost uh, basically all of our September transplants in the prop house. Uh, hose was moved, wasn't moved back. We pretty much lost everything. That's why the tomato house is still intact. Why take the tomatoes out when we still need them to sell? Otherwise, this would have already been wiped out and planted in lettuce. As well as this tunnel over here, We'll be going the same way. I'm still sitting on some beds of arugula down there just because I need to. And I've got my winter onions down there in the flats, uh, right there. Some lettuce there. And then uh, getting ready to turn the uh, high tunnel into production too. I gotta get the door on, we'll be getting cooler nights. But a lot of time in the winter, or towards the winter, transitioning seasons, we gotta start changing over. And yes, by the way, Got a different hat today because I did not want my good hat blowing off and going underneath the brush hog and getting uh, brush hogged. So I wore the cheapo and it's got a chin strap because it is windy as heck out here. Anytime we have these extreme temperature changes like this back and forth, where we're at in Kansas, we get winds that are just insane. I mean, right now we're looking at 25 mile per hour winds gusting 30s. And that's out of the south. So going back towards the house blowing off of the fields, everything this way. Uh, temperature's gonna cool down, which means then they'll come from the north, which will be coming from the house, blowing back this way. So that's just a 
fall spring routine for us it's extreme winds that's why i've got all the wind fence set up and everything out here but i mean all in all i'm getting ready to bed this thing down for the winter and then i can start construction time taking this up doing four rows gotta convert one of these tunnels with more pieces over to four rows 16 foot wide cat tunnel that'll disappear um not sure where i'm gonna put that one i gotta get more plastic on the way and then uh the old uh cat tunnel i had out last year that was sitting over here that's kind of the a-frame one that you know went up and had the tent connectors quick caterpillar tunnel i think i called it i don't remember but i'm gonna use that and set it up on post and go set it over on a uh, plot three which is behind the high tunnel there and uh that's gonna be the new prop house I have a dedicated large prop house to where I can set up automated irrigation with dedicated lines so nobody can actually take a hose off and I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I'll make a really, really good improvement on the farm. The only other thing we need is rain. I mean, it's yellow everywhere. Water bill has been very high, so it is what it is. I did get strawberries in. All 700 of them. I got a little bit down there towards the end right there that I've got to actually uh, I'm gonna grab some all-stars out of the bed up there next to where uh, oh next to where the uh, grapevines are and use those and plant those out and fill up the holes they're getting rooted you know I planted them on uh, 10 inch centers and then they shot runners and the runners have rooted through the fabric so I can just pull them up it just needs to rain a little bit so well hope you all like we saw today if you did don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day.